Well, okay, everybody, welcome back to another presentation. I am painting Lone Peak. This is going to be part one of two video segments, mainly because I think a lot of what I have to show uh, needs to be seen uh, in more uh, complete detail than I think I was able to do able to do in one video presentation. So I hope you that you will be okay with that. Of course, uh, I'm putting in the sky first with uh, blue and gray paint. And the idea is to really paint the spirit of the sky as you see it here. When you see the photo insect come up, you'll find out that I'm not really painting it precisely as the photo shows. If I did, it would look a little stiff and stilted. So I'm, uh, I put in my own sky and I feel really good about that sky that I have in there. So from there, it's a process of going through and carefully establishing the patterns of the light and the shadow playing on the mountainside. Like I said, this is Lone Peak. It is um, just a little over 11,000 feet tall in elevation. And it's a major peak along the Wasatch Front. Sits in kind of the southeast corner of the Valley of the Great Salt Lake. So as you're watching this come together, I'm basically basically painting it in, in two passes, this portion here. First of all, it's just simple, the light and shadow on the snow-covered mountainside. And then you will see basically the patterns of trees going in. And I keep using the word patterns, really, because that's what I'm doing. I'm painting patterns, and I think it's important for you to understand that that is what is happening here, is I'm not painting detail, but rather I'm painting patterns. It was a pretty careful and detailed process that I went through in laying down the initial pencil line work that you can see that I'm now covering with the, uh, the watercolor paint. It was not traced, but it was uh, measured carefully and drawn proportionately. I try to spot key coordinate points where I put a spot. And for example, obviously, Lone Peak itself, I, I established that location mathematically within the picture plane. And then I started uh, watching my angles and my proportions to establish the rest of the image. So here we are seeing the patterns of the trees being painted on the mountainside. And of course it helps to give it a more complete picture. With time and experience, the artist can uh, work through the degree to which they mix their paint to get, um, I don't know if I'm wording that very well, to get the various lights and darks or the value patterns that they need to get. It's a matter of just watching the consistency of the paint that you mix. There is a... Uh, idea about mixing watercolor paint called tea, coffee, milk, and butter. And it's basically describing the various uh, viscosities or thicknesses, intensities of color and value that the artist can mix watercolor paint at. Uh, butter being pretty much straight out of the tube, uh, milk being pretty thick paint but still some water in it, coffee thinner still and tea thinnest yet so you can think of the uh, color that I laid down for the sky well the blue that was pretty much coffee consistency as opposed to the gray of the shadowed side of the clouds that would be like a tea like consistency or thickness of the medium that I laid down and then I went from a kind of a tea like uh, consistency in the shadows that I first laid down to more of a coffee-like 
consistency in the patterns of the trees that you see going in. Hope that makes sense as I'm trying to <laughs> just describe it to you with words. Once I got to the drawing done, I, I then had to go quite carefully with the shading, with the shadows, the light and shadow patterns. The trees are going in a little faster, a little more easily, in part because I've had experience with uh, this and where, the, where things lie, and I'm able to study my photo resource more easily and drop in the colors and the patterns where they need to be. And this is all drawing. It's just with a different medium and a different tool. You've heard me say that before. <laughs> Hopefully the repetition of the message will help it to sink in. So I'm going back over and establishing a few more uh, of the light and dark patterns, refining what I originally laid down and going from there. This really is the bulk of the painting, the heart and soul of the painting, the getting of that mountain just as correct visually as I could. Everything else is, uh, is uh, kind of icing on the cake, if you will. I'm starting to lay in the middle distant ground patterns of color and shade. I'm starting to introduce a bit more green and you'll see even more green go in in a minute here as I try to get that laid in. You know, I'd really be interested to know what you feel about the speed at which I'm running these videos. Am I working them too fast or am, am I not painting fast enough? Uh, I've got them a pretty good clip going these days to try and get through them in a timely manner. And uh, I'd be interested to know your thoughts on whether or not I'm running the videos too fast? Would you like me to slow them down? Or are they going at a good speed? Are you getting the gist of what it is I'm trying to show you in the process of making this painting? So the colors in the foreground, the middle distant ground coming into the foreground, are becoming more intense. They're also becoming more warm color temperature wise so that they feel like they're coming into that foreground. And those patterns are going in quite loose. Well, okay, we're coming down to the end of it for this first uh, portion of my presentation for this week. Hope it's been beneficial for you to watch. Let me know what you think, and I look forward to seeing you in part two of this presentation on the painting of Lone Peak.